Sam, long time no see. I sent you an invitation to my wedding, but I was just wondering if you've looked at it yet? After all, you haven't sent me any reply back to it, so I've been a little worried. That's why I've decided it's a good idea to text you. You haven't blocked me or anything, right? I'm not coming. I went all the way to send you a text after all these years, though. You're not even going to show me a little love? You don't have to be that rude when we're both adults now, right? I know you're not even married yet, right? I think you're forgetting some things that may have spoiled the relationship we once had. You took my boyfriend away from me back in high school. And then you were the one to tell me that we'd be cutting ties, right? So if that's the man you're going to be getting married to, then that's nice. But I have not gotten any invite from you yet for the wedding. I don't have it at my place, so... And even if I did get it, I would still say no to coming. Wait, you didn't even get it? I tried so hard to make that card as cute as possible for you. So where the hell did you send that pain in the butt invite? To your house. The only house you'd recognize as being mine is from back when I was in high school with you. I'm no longer at that house anymore. Oh wait, really? Did you guys end up being too poor to afford that place and had to run away? <laughs> Maybe your dad's company finally went under and you had to sell that house to pay off the banks? This isn't some kind of a TV show, Riley. Why the hell would you think that was the case for us when you could have said something normal like us just wanting to move into a new house? Well, when you say you're no longer there, that means you have no money, right? Must suck being poor, huh? Well, I'm about to be, what would you say, wealthy here very soon. <laughs> Man, this world is so unfair to some people, isn't it? <laughs> Don't try and make up your own story about me, please. A company was planning on using that land to develop more stores, but they wanted to buy it from us. And since they offered a really good amount of money, we sold the place. Really? Because whether it was a good amount or not, I'm sure you would have had to take that money. There's a limit to how rude I'll let you be to me. So you're being serious, though, about not getting the invitation? I'm sure you're saying you won't come because it's too painful to see the woman that stole your boyfriend in high school get married before you, right? Why do you think I'm living in sadness right now? I don't care that you're getting married. Are we done here? I don't have time to be talking with someone that cut ties with me. I'll take a picture of the invite later and have it sent to you on here, okay? I'm going to be marrying a super elite man at this wedding. And this wedding is going to be so luxurious. And my man's parents are also very affluent and run a company that controls all sorts of resorts around the world. Well, good for you. But I'm a busy woman, so I'm not coming. But it'd be a waste for you not to come to such a beautiful wedding like ours, right? And I'm sure that my man will have a lot of his friends there. That could be good pickings for you. His co-workers will also be there. I don't really need a man right now, so I'm fine. Come on now. Are you really that upset with me because I took your boyfriend away? Are you still shocked by all that? Upset that you couldn't get far with a hunk like him back then? Oh my, this is so sad to see. That's not the reason why, but... And even if that happened to somehow be the case, it was all because of you. So I don't want you saying poor things to me after that. It's your fault for letting me take him. But let's be real, I didn't have to put up much of a fight for him. I'm sure that getting away from you was amazing for him. And that's what really pissed me off. You took my boyfriend from me, and after only a week, you dumped him for yet another man. Well, I'm a really sexy woman, so I have to keep myself entertained. It's funny, because one day you came up to me asking about my boyfriend, since you were my best friend then, and I let you know about him. And not even a day later, you had him in your arms while you laughed at me. And not just that, but you told him all sorts of bad things about me. And I'll never forgive you for making me look like the bad guy in all of that. I am so scared by the fact that you took all of that so seriously. <laughs> well, I have no interest in ever seeing you again after this, so I'm not coming to your wedding. But I wanted to show off my wedding dress to all of my best friends. Have a great wedding. 
Goodbye. You're really not coming? You'll regret that, Sam. It's going to be an amazing wedding haul and everything. Hey, Sam. I'll be waiting for you at the wedding, okay? Hey, thanks for coming out to drink. And actually, during that time when we went out drinking, I didn't say this then, but I'm going to be getting married. Do you think you can come see the wedding? Wait, you're getting married? Congratulations! I honestly never thought you'd be getting married anytime soon, Chris. Wait, you've had a girlfriend all this time? Oh, come on now. <laughs> you know that I'm a good-looking guy, right? <laughs> I know that, but... You never seem to stick with any of the women you had before, and you've had a lot of them. <laughs> well, this one is a lot different than those other women. We have been going months now, and our love is still strong. And now we're finally planning to get married to one another. Well, that's great to hear. So are you going to be asking everyone from college to come to the wedding? I'm thinking of asking everyone that was in club activities with me. All those people you'd go out drinking with too, huh? When's the wedding going to be? In about another three months on the second Saturday of that month. Do you think you can make it then? I think I can make it work. After all, this is the wedding of one of my best friends from college, and we went through it all together. So I'll make sure to be all excited when I come. Do you plan to be going to any other wedding soon? Well, I told you about the one before, right? About the girl from high school that stole my boyfriend from me? Oh, that's the story about how she turned on you being good friends and told your boyfriend a bunch of lies about you, right? Well, she talked to me about a week ago about her wedding. She said she'd invited me to her wedding and wanted me to come. But didn't you both cut ties in high school? And that's why I told her no. But she still went on and told me the date and where the event would be held at. She really has no need to be putting herself through all that trouble. She's a pretty crazy woman, huh? What's the woman that you'll be marrying like? She told me that I'm her first true love. She said I'm the first man she's ever dated and the only man she wants to be with for the rest of her life. And when she said that, I knew this would work out for me. Wait, but I mean like, where did you find her and what does she do? I already know that you have a way with women and all that. <laughs> I remember in elementary school, you had your first girlfriend. But I mean, you had quite a few boys into you as well, right? And ever since elementary school until now, you've been mainly friends with guys, right? And most of all, you've been close to me, so maybe we're meant for each other. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd love to introduce you to her sometime so that she can tell you about herself instead of me doing it. After the wedding's all over with, you should come over and we can all hang out. Now that you mention, after the wedding, do you plan to move? My dad has an apartment he doesn't use anymore, so we'll move into there. It's a very large apartment meant for a family of four, so it'll be the perfect place for us to start. That'll at least hold us over for 10 or 15 years, right? I'm looking forward to seeing all your family, so I can't wait for your wedding. And my parents have been on me about inviting you to the wedding for a week now. <laughs> my parents only ever had me and always wanted a daughter as well, so they saw you as sort of their own baby girl. Thank goodness. <laughs> Let them know that I'm really looking forward to meeting them at the wedding. Then I'll send you the invitation soon so that you don't forget the date and place. You still live in the house, right? Well, if you're talking about the house I've been at all this year, it's the same. Understood. I'll send it tomorrow, so expect it the day after. You already know that I'm coming, but I'll still make sure to RSVP. Thank you. I have to be the one to put together the whole guest list, so that'll make it easier for me. You've always been good at paperwork, right? You always have a good memory, so when it comes to dealing with lists, you never forget a thing. I'll be waiting on that invitation. After all those times telling me you wouldn't come to my wedding, you finally decided to come here? <laughs> Did you come here on accident or something? I didn't know myself. Just after I saw you a second ago, you burst out laughing at me. Well, I never actually thought that I'd be seeing you come in today. I didn't even notice you during the whole ceremony, but now that we're all partying, I happen to run into you. And that scared the crap out of me before I started to laugh. <laughs> Are you planning to stay here for the ending of this wedding? Are you sure it's okay for you to still be texting me when you should be getting ready? Don't you have to be in the back or something? I'm fine. I've already gotten myself ready for what all comes next, so don't worry about me. <laughs> 
Now tell me, what do you think of my dress and body? <laughs> Amazing, aren't I? Sure are, I'm surprised. Am I more beautiful than the last time we saw one another? You don't have to compliment me too much, you know. And I want to say, it's okay for you to stick around until the end today, but I didn't invite anyone else from high school, so it'll just be you by yourself today. Is that okay? That's fine with me. Even though we don't have a seat for you? Huh? What do you mean you don't have a seat for me? Well, this is the most important day to me, and I've made sure of that. So I never actually meant for the woman I cut ties with to show up. I was just joking the whole time, yet you seriously came? Of course there's no seat for you. <laughs> That's fine, because I was invited by the groom. Huh? The groom invited you? What are you talking about? The reason I'm here today is because I said I'd be coming to the groom's wedding. I'm surprised, though. I didn't actually take a good look at who he'd be getting married to. And because it was his wedding today, I just assumed nothing could go wrong here and just came along with only my excitement. But now I can see that you happen to be the woman he's getting married to today. Hold on a minute, what? You already know him? You know Chris? I guess I should have known when you were telling me that he was a wealthy man and both of his parents own a company that has resorts all over the world. <laughs> Explain all of this to me right now. Why do you know about him and his parents? Don't tell me that ever since you lost your boyfriend to me in high school, you've been planning to steal my fiancé from me, right? I would never do that. Do you think I'm a monster too or something? Then tell me why you know all about Chris. Way back in the day, his family and my family lived right next to one another. Huh? Right next to you guys? He and I ended up going to the same elementary school and the same middle school. And the both of us were really into comic books, so we'd always be hanging out at each other's house and reading them together. What the heck? I had gone over to your house all the time in high school to hang out, and I never once met him. What do you mean he was living right next to you? Didn't you tell me those people living next to you were an old couple? Well, my last year in middle school, Chris's dad ended up having to go overseas for work, and so the rest of his family followed. Huh? But we still stayed in touch while he was out of the country, and when it was time for us to go to college, he had moved back to the U.S. and planned to go to college here. So after talking back and forth about where we'd be going and helping one another out with the admission paperwork, we went to the same college together and graduated together. Uh, but don't worry. He and I had grown up like brother and sister, so never once did he or I ever have anything other than sibling love between us. So, you're telling me that Chris and you went to elementary school, middle school, and college together? We were going into two different majors in college, but still went and joined the same clubs. And today all those people that were in those clubs with us are here at the wedding as well. So I myself have a seat ready to go, so don't worry about me. And because both his mom and dad are here and are dying to see me, I'm going to be around them talking about my life. Hold on. You haven't said anything unnecessary to them, right? What do you mean by unnecessary things? You know what I'm talking about, right? That's what I want you to keep a secret. Are you talking about all the lies you told? Wait, lies? Did you tell Chris that he was the first man you've ever dated and would be the first man you'd go on forever with? Why do you know about that? Chris really loves himself, all those fantasy comics and stuff. So when you said that to him like some sort of romantic fantasy, he was in your hands. Don't you dare tell them anything that they shouldn't know about. He believes right now that he's the only man I've ever been with. Just as I expected. You're full of lies, right? Well... I haven't said anything to them yet. Do you really think I'm that petty that I'd rather watch you suffer at the cost of ruining his marriage with you today? Sam, so you really are my best friend. You're going to keep all of that a secret for our sakes, right? Well, now that I think about it, I'm talking with him right now. Huh? Talking with him now? About what? I'm talking to him about the story of the person that stole my boyfriend from me back in high school again. And we are talking all about that right now. Even though I did explain this stuff to him back in college. 
You're joking, right? You know I'm not. He loves talking about our college lives, and so we have been talking about our high school relationships. And that's when I brought it all up to him. Did you tell him today that that friend of yours was me? I just told you. I don't want to ruin this wedding just to watch you suffer, right? I didn't even know you were going to be the bride today at his wedding, so I never thought about mentioning you to him. Thank God. Please, Sam, keep all of that stuff a secret. I do not want to have to run away from all the money he has. Are you aware of everything else that's supposed to happen today at this wedding? I know about the main gist of the wedding, but I left all the details up to Chris to handle. I made sure to put together all the decorations and all the menus for the wedding. And that's about all I helped out with when getting set up today. Well, then you're aware that there will be a speech today that his best friend will do? His best friend will have a speech for us? Wait, that best friend is me. Stop that! Go home right now, you! I don't even want to know what you plan to say today. Do not take away my happiness. Please do not do this to me. I finally found a man with enough money to make me happy. I had a lot of men that I was dating, and he was the one I chose to be the one. You were dating a lot of other men? Wait, that, that was nothing. Just a lie. Oh, it's getting time for the final ceremony and the speech. They asked me to go and sit down in my seat, so that's what I'm going to do. Wait, please, Sam. Do not do that speech for me. Sam? I'm so sorry about today. I'm in a rush right now, but when everything's been taken care of, I'd like to come and apologize to you. No, no, you haven't done anything wrong, so there's no need to apologize to me. You know that this all has to do with that idiot Riley. But I just could not believe that the best friend from high school that stole your boyfriend was Riley. Well, that's all in the past now. And so if you're happy with someone like her, then that's totally fine with me. I never really wanted to say all of that in my original speech, by the way. But because of how Riley began to act and throw a fit when I got on stage and then threw her wine glass at me, I had had enough of her. I'm sorry. I also freaked out a little then and was laughing at first at what happened to you. It was like something out of a drama, so I just couldn't hold my laughter back. Well, you and I both, Chris. I was laughing too. The staining from her wine will probably not come out of your dress, huh? I'll make sure to pay for a new one for you. Don't worry about it. I'll make sure that Riley pays me for it. But before we talk any more about that, what about what happens next with you both? That's right. I have a few things that I'd like to think about. I know that what happened with you in high school is in the past now, and so some of that could be due to her being young and unaware, but it was her fault in the end. No, I also think it's just because we were all young back then. Now, this is all up to you what you do next, but since you've always been like a brother to me, I only want the future that's best for you, and nothing else. I think this may take some effort, but it might be worth it to start investigating into her a bit more. Hmm? Are there things I need to learn about? Before she knew that you and I knew one another, she told me that she had lots of men she was dating before she finally chose you. She had been dating other men? Don't tell me. She was actually with other men besides just me at the time? I don't like to talk bad about other people, but that chick is full of lies. You are not her first boyfriend, and back when she stole my boyfriend in high school, she lied a bunch about me. Thank you, Sam. I I'll think about this all a lot. Why is this happening to me? Because of you, my marriage is all over the place now. Because of me? Are you sure this isn't just you getting what you deserve? You told him about all the things that happened between me and you and a bunch more crap. You lied to him about me cheating on him as well. And now he's telling me if he can't trust me enough, he won't be able to stay married to me. And now he's wanting to get a settlement from me. What do you mean I told him some lies about you? I told him all the facts about you, Riley. That's all. 
Honestly, I had been planning to leave all the past in the past and just give a normal speech about the two of you to celebrate your guys' marriage. And so I was never going to say a thing about your past to anyone there. But then you got up on stage with me and threw your wine glass at me before yelling that I leave the wedding, right? And that was to protect my happiness! Well, only your happiness, right? Excuse me? You made sure to keep yourself happy. You had all sorts of men in love with you so that you had a lot to choose from. And you lied about all of that to Chris, right? You had planned to find one of those men to marry, but then when you saw that Chris had a lot of money, you ditched all those other men and stuck to marrying Chris. But about all those other men you had led to believe would be marrying you, you just threw all their happiness and time in the trash. What's so bad about me doing things like that to make sure I remain happy? Actually, if that's the way you want to live your life, then by all means, you can continue doing so. But Chris had never wanted to marry someone like that and be with them for the rest of his life. And so when he found out about that, he had no choice but to be upset with you. He's only one man, right? You have plenty of others to go out and use. So long as you pay the settlement to Chris, you'll be just fine. <laughs> Shut your mouth! You came and ruined my wedding when you were uninvited and gave me a bad name for no reason. I'm going to sue you for that. Well, I happen to have one of his father's lawyers at my side right now, so go ahead and talk to him about how you plan to handle that. Huh? You already have a lawyer? Well, yeah, I'm going to need you to pay me back for hitting me with that wine glass and ruining my expensive dress. And you made sure that everyone there got to witness you doing all of that to me. So I think I'm going to have you pay me a lot for that trauma. Hold on now, Sam. Why do I have to be the one paying you? Well, because there are a lot of witnesses to the event and there were cameras on every wall. Everyone and everything saw you throw that wine glass at me and ruin my dress and happiness. So I'm sorry, but there is just too much evidence showing that you're in the wrong to let go of. Hold on, please. Everyone already wants me to pay for the whole wedding. And the rest of those men that I'd been with while dating Chris are asking for me to pay a settlement for cheating on them. I shouldn't have to pay anyone money for trying to keep myself happy. So that must mean the phrase, you get what you deserve, works perfectly here then. You have to be freaking kidding me. This is going to end my life. This is not at all what I had in mind. I was supposed to end up with a husband who would pay for all my wants and needs and could live the rest of my life with a smile on my face. And now my mom and dad won't talk to me anymore, so there's no money for me to give up. I'm about to go out with some friends of mine and Chris's friends from college now. So go ahead and talk to my lawyer about what all you'll need to pay me, okay? Wait a second, Sam! If I'd known that you and Chris were longtime friends, then I would have tried to make up with you. Then this would have never happened to us. We aren't in high school anymore, though. We don't just make up over things like that anymore. Now act like an adult and deal with the consequences for us. <laughs> After learning the grand total from all the settlements for cheating and lying, as well as for my dress and traumatizing me and for the wedding fee and Chris divorcing her, Riley was left with no money in her bank accounts and was working 18 hours a day to make enough money to pay off all the money she had to borrow. Of course, of the guys she had tried to fall back on to marry and save her, none of them came to her side and her parents were both done with her as well. She had no place to run away to and will forever be stuck with the debt she has. Unless she can make it into her elderly years and finally have everything paid off. <laughs> Today's dinner was so much fun, Krista. The restaurant seemed to be very high class and the food was amazing. <laughs> if you ever go out again, please don't be afraid to invite my husband and I again because that was a spectacular time. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. Do you think you can at least pay for your guys' food? Huh? Why? Well, because you guys happened to order a lot of extra drinks and appetizers today compared to everyone else. Extra caviar and the most expensive champagne they had. Just with those extra orders, you guys exceeded $4,000. And right now, Gage and I are a bit astonished by seeing that on the bill. And what are you trying to say to me? <laughs> Today was the day for you guys to celebrate getting married, right? 
If you guys plan to not even have a wedding, then at least celebrate by paying for all your family to be at that dinner with you. So don't expect a penny out of either me or my husband, okay? And I can understand what you think, but... But we didn't even think you two could order that much extra drink and food by yourselves. It would have been fine if it was an extra basket of bread, but that was way too much tonight. Well, I'm sorry, but I didn't think my husband and I actually spent over $4,000 on everything there. You only had a one-course meal ordered for us, and that wasn't going to cut it, so we just happened to have wanted a little extra food and drink to go along with it. And when we go out to restaurants we like to dine at, that same amount of food and drink would only cost us $200 at most. This is what happens when you try and make yourselves look big by reserving a fancy restaurant for us. <laughs> Are you saying it's our fault for reserving that restaurant, Mana? That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> my husband and I came today to celebrate my little brother and his wife. So don't get all upset about us being there if you're the ones that invited us in the first place. <laughs> Can you at least pay for a small portion of what you guys ate? We'll pay 80% if you guys can cover the other 20%. At least then we wouldn't have to cover that whole $4,000 for you two. Stop messing around with me, Krista. It's because of you two getting such a fancy and high-end restaurant that I had to pay a pretty penny for all my makeup and hair to be done. Yet now you want us to pay more for just eating some food? We aren't paying a thing for tonight. Really? Maybe from now on, you guys should stick to chain restaurants or something casual if you don't want to pay more than $1,000 for everyone. <laughs> ah, right. How about next time you guys just host a party at your house for everyone? Have everyone that comes at least bring one food or drink with them and then you won't have to pay more than $200 for the night. <laughs> a home party, huh? We talked about it today during dinner. You guys are planning to move into an amazing apartment tower now that you're married, right? <laughs> the views are amazing and the rooms are spacious. And when mom and dad went with you guys to check the place out, they had a ball. So when you guys are ready, we'll come over to play as well. <laughs> well, if that's what you guys want to do next, I'll have to check with Gage first. I can't just choose these sorts of things on my own. Well, we'll make sure to make time for whenever you guys are ready to have us over. When you both have a good date open, let us know. We'll bring some good food and alcohol over and we can all have a fun night. My dad just told me that him and mom have made it back home safely. They said that today's dinner was absolutely wonderful. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm happy to hear they both had a great dinner with us. And actually, just a bit ago, I was texting with Mana. She said she and her husband both had a great time as well. Well, maybe that's due to the two of them going over the top with all the food and drink they ordered. When you asked them to pay for what they ate, did she take that well? She told me she has no intention of paying for it. I asked for them to at least pay a portion of the bill, but even then she told me they already paid enough just to be there for us and then went on to tell me that asking for money from them now is just not right. Dang it. And I guess that 4000 is all going to have to be paid off by us. <sighs> I'm sorry for my stupidly selfish sister. I'll make sure to pay for all they ate with my savings. No, you don't have to do that. We both invited them to be at the dinner, so I'll pay for half of that. Anyway, Mana also said that she'd like to come to our new apartment to hang out sometime and wondered if we could do a home party and all. What? She invited herself to have a home party at our new place? Well, talking about today's dinner led us to starting a new conversation about the apartment. And that's when she said that she wanted to come over and play. Uh, she must have heard about Mom and Dad coming with us to check the place out last time. And since they all seemed to be really interested in the apartment, they always commented about it throughout today's dinner. And that's what got Mana really into coming over to see the place firsthand. She said she and her husband would bring some food and drinks and we could all have a party there. What should we do? Should we have a party? And when? No, I'm not going to let her and her husband into this new apartment. You can just forget about her ever asking about a home party. Because it's not happening at our place. 
Next time, if she says anything about it, tell her I said no. Huh? You don't want either of them coming over to our place? You let your mom and dad come. I have a hunch that when she comes here, she'll try to steal something from us, and I'm not letting that happen. So she's not coming in. And if she does come in, we'll lose some things and never see them again. Huh? What do you mean by that? I know that you can see it in them, but my sister and her husband are both very selfish and will do anything and take anything they please. You could say that she's jealous of what others have, but too cheap to buy her own things. But I know that if she comes into our house, she'll leave with her hands full of our things. Are you serious? When I was living on my own, she came over quite often to hang out with me. She'd say that she was in the area shopping and wanted to stop over at my place and take a rest. But when they leave my place, I'd start realizing I was missing some of my things. Are you sure you're not just mistaking some things? I made sure to check everywhere for my things before accusing them. I started to notice that my toilet paper would disappear. But as time went on and they got worse and worse, I started to notice my clothing has gone missing and things like that. What? Even the t-shirts that I collected from those metal concerts I've gone to were missing. And one time, when her husband came over, I saw him taking my things. Of course, I confronted them about it right then, but then they told me that they were just borrowing things before they ran off with them. And ever since then, I've gotten nothing of what they borrowed back. That's really terrible of them, though. Even if you're family, that shouldn't mean they get to have all your things. And that's the reason why those two are not allowed in our new apartment. And this place isn't just mine, but ours, and we have a lot of things here. I'm at least a little used to having some of my things stolen, but if they start stealing your things too, I break. I get that, and I'm not too happy about any of that either. And I guess we're not going to be having a house party with them then. And even besides that, we'll make sure not to let her or her husband into our place. Yeah, let's do our best with that. I'm sorry, Krista. My family has all sorts of problems. If she says anything else to you about it, tell me right away. I'll make sure to handle them for you since she's my sister after all. Krista! I decided to come over to hang out, but why are you not here? Are you guys out of the house somewhere? Wait, Mana? I bought some beers to bring over, so I'll put those in the fridge for later, okay? We could have them all when everyone's back here. The fridge... Hey, slow down a second there. Don't tell me you're in our apartment right now. <laughs> you never ended up letting me know when we could come over, so I decided to let myself in. We already knew that Mom had a set of keys to the place. So after going to their house after dark, we grabbed the keys and came here to let ourselves in today. What? But, but that's breaking and entering, right? What are you talking about, Krista? We are your family, so we don't have to worry about things like that. But before we talk any more about that, can you tell us where you both went? It's the weekend now, so we had planned to come and have drinks with you both. We, well... We're on our honeymoon right now. I told you earlier that we'd be going to Europe today for our honeymoon and that we'd be back sometime later, right? Huh? Is that so? Hmm. I feel that you did tell me that one time, but I guess I forgot. But back then, while you were still around, you should have invited me, so I was a bit disappointed in you for that. You were disappointed? I had some feeling that that day you really wanted me to ask for you to come over, but... Really? <laughs> and that's because I did want you to ask me over. <laughs> Yet now that I decided to let myself over, you both happen to be out of the country. I don't even want to go home now. I guess... Until you both get back, we'll just have to live here. <laughs> what? And just as mom and dad said, this place is super spacious. It's like living in the dream world, being up this high in the apartment tower with all this nice interior. Uh, I think we'll be taking this place over from now on. I think it's been long enough now, so why don't you engage just hand this place over to his big sister? There is no way we'd ever do something like that for you. Don't say such stupid things and just hurry up and leave our apartment, okay? 
Entering into someone's house without asking is trespassing, and that's not good. I told you, it's fine. We're your family, right? Oh, I just found some really high-quality steak in your guys' freezer. <laughs> A5, huh? That's pretty expensive, isn't it? You and my little brother sure have lived the dream life here. Please stop going through our freezer like that. What is all of this? Some really expensive looking wines and the most amazing looking cheese. I'm going to open these all up right away. I'll make sure to leave you guys those cheap beers in exchange for this lovely wine, okay? <laughs> I am telling you to please stop, Mana. You can't go into someone else's house and start eating and drinking all their things like that. What? What is this? What are all these really high-end pieces of jewelry you have here? These are those types that were only sold a limited time and were gone within days, right? Hey, what are you at now fishing around like that? Do not just go into our room looking through all our things, please. I heard that these things can sell for a lot online right now. My God. I just put one of them up for sale and it's already been sold. And I just made three times the original amount of it. <laughs> this is amazing here. <laughs> you have to be joking. Did you just sell one of my pieces of jewelry? It's fine, it's fine. I'll make sure to give you half the money I received, okay? And the other half will go to me for going through all of this work. <laughs> Stop all of this right now, Mana. Doing all of this after breaking into our house is not okay. If you are not out of that house in one minute, I'm calling the police. What? <laughs> Were you not listening to what I just said a second ago? My husband and I really like this apartment, and so from here on out, it's where we're going to live. So this is no longer your guys' place to go home anymore. <laughs> Excuse me? You guys don't have a place to come home to now. <laughs> you guys still have some time on your honeymoon to start looking for a new place to live. <laughs> we never planned to go back there. Huh? Actually, a few days before we went on vacation, Gage and I moved out of there. And so we haven't been planning on ever going back there once we're done on our honeymoon. You moved out? Then whose place is this right now? And the key that mom and dad had still allowed us to get in. Normally when someone moves out, the company that owns the tower will change the lock, right? Well, the next couple to be moving in is close to us, and so we saw no need having all the locks and keys changed out. After all, we were handing that place over to your mom and dad to live in. What? My mom and dad? Actually, we had been talking with them about this. They told us before that they really did love our apartment a lot. And when we told them that we had planned to move out at some point, they asked if they could have it next as their new home. Their new home? Well, the house they had was getting really old, and they were first thinking of remodeling that house. But during that time, they came over and saw our new apartment, and that's when they became interested in wanting to live here. But having them look for a tower apartment of their own to move into can be pretty stressful. And so your brother and I started thinking that maybe they could move into our apartment. And so in the end, we decided to have them take our place and move in. And they really liked that idea and thanked us for it. What the heck? And also, recently, you have been a pain in the butt. So we had the idea of moving out on our minds for a month now. And so, since we both had been wanting to move and your parents really wanted this place, we gave it to them in turn for whatever money they got for that old house so that we could get a new place to live. And that's why we were able to move out of there right before we took our honeymoon and have a new place to live. So then that means, wait a sec. So right now, this isn't your guys' apartment, but my mom and dad's? Yep, your parents wanted a more relaxed life and living there would give them that. And so that steak and wine and cheese that you just happened to eat and drink all belonged to your mom and dad. And that high-end piece of jewelry you just sold belonged to your mom. And I remember her telling me that she always had to take days out of her life waiting to buy those for herself. Huh? You're lying, right? What should I do? I didn't know this all belonged to my parents now. And it seems your mom and dad are close by going on a walk right now. 
And when I called them and let them know of this, they said they'd start walking home right away. So they should be there any minute now to see you both. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. Right now the doorbell is going off like crazy. Mom and Dad are going to be so pissed with me for this. Well, Gage and I are on our honeymoon trip, so I'm going to have to leave you with them now. Make sure to apologize to them both, okay? Help me, Krista. Do you think you can let us come stay with you for a bit? Huh? What happened to you? My mom and dad kicked me out of their apartment. I tried so hard to apologize to them for everything, but they were both so frustrated with me that they wouldn't listen to a word I said. And they ended by saying they never wanted me around them ever again. But my husband and I had planned to live in that apartment, right? And so the apartment we had before, we gave up before coming over to that tower apartment. Man, you really did plan on taking our apartment away from us. Right now we're trying to make it work without a house, but I can't do it any longer. And another thing, right? I was fired from my job. But with the amount my husband brings in, we cannot live like this and we have no savings. And without any money, he and I can't find a place to rent. And having to move into someplace new does cost a lot of money and time, right? So if you can please let us stay with you until we have enough money saved up, that'd be much appreciated. Let us know where you guys moved away to. You guys have to be back from that honeymoon by now, right? So please let us live with you guys for a while in that new place. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. After telling Gage about what happened recently and the history he's had with you, I don't think I'll ever be able to allow you guys around our house. But we are family, aren't we? And even if we're in-laws, I've always seen you as my little sister. And you can see that your older sister is struggling right now, so just shut up and let us stay with you. If you don't, I'm no longer going to be friendly with you. Actually, I'm totally fine with you and I never seeing each other again. And if you think you're struggling right now, I'd rather not let you over here or else you'll make Gage and I struggle with you both as well. And I get that you think I'm your little sister, but in reality, I'm your husband's boss. And so really, I have control over what happens with you both. Huh? You're, you're my husband's boss? So no matter how much you think you and I have been close, I'm not thinking of us the same way. He's my employee right now, and I don't want to have a personal connection to his family when at any moment I might need to fire him. Huh? Wait, what did you just say? We had talked about this during my dinner a while back, but I suppose you both were drunk off of that champagne, and so you never heard me talking about being your husband's boss. You guys really work for the same company? What the hell? This is the first time I'm hearing about any of this. And the company we work for isn't all that big, so when I got married, he knew about it pretty quickly. Word began to spread then about how him and I would be related and that that would mean he would be my subordinate, even though he's my family, and that's against company policy. So the plan was that after I had gotten married and was back in the office, he would have to change departments. And so, actually, he's been left with another manager in charge of him. Wait, what? Why do you get to be above my own husband in that company? My husband is older than you, right? But I happen to have a lot better of an education. And I've done a lot more for this company. Huh? This company is relatively new, and so things like age and gender play no part in who becomes management here. And so those who actually put in the work and are educated in what they do get to move up. So, wait, that means you're saying my husband pretty much sucks at his job there? Well, to be honest, yes. And I have to say, I'd never really want to consider him my employee or anything. <laughs> Just be aware that when I'm back, things will become a lot more strict for him. I don't want him thinking he can just keep getting away with slacking off while he has a bunch of work to get done. What? I've heard from a lot of the other leaders in this company about him. They say he's never wanted to get anything done right, and he's always on his phone or at other people's desks talking with them. That's probably the reason someone like me was able to become a manager here, and he had to stay put. <laughs> huh? W wait, you... Just because we're family doesn't mean you get a free pass to start talking about my husband that way. 
I promise you that he will not take all that talk lightly. He'll make sure to surpass you in no time there. And that would be awesome. But before he can do that, I think he'll be on the company's chopping block. <laughs> huh? According to others, he has been stealing some things from the company. And soon the company will have evidence of all that to work with. And since you've been fired, and so will your husband here soon, you both will be stuck in a pretty crappy lifestyle. <laughs> Excuse me? I'll just say this for your sake, but remember that even though you guys will have nowhere to go, you cannot break into other people's homes. They might really call the police on you both, and that wouldn't turn out well. Now, I'm going to say goodbye. Bye! <laughs> After all of that, the following day, Mana's husband was brought into the HR office and had quite the talking to. They had evidence of him stealing things from the company, and he replied by telling them it was his wife by asking him to bring those things back to her. He would then say he shouldn't be fired for listening to what his wife wanted, but they replied by saying his work ethic is also poor and he never seems to do anything but talk to other employees all day. And that day, he was kicked out of the office building and told to never return, along with having to pay the company back for the list of things he'd stolen, totaling out to $750 of things. And then after that, those two ran crying back to Mana's mom, trying to get her to understand them. But she didn't have any of it when she learned that they were causing problems for everyone and not just the family. And then followed up by telling them they were no longer family. And that was the end of them ever having anything to do with us, and that was great news to Gage and I. And when trying to ask friends to let them stay at their houses, they'd tell them to stay away because they didn't want their things stolen either. This led to those two finally giving up on trying to rely on others, and so they started to look for work so they could start back over from square one. So right now, the both of them are working for a two-star hotel outside of town where they also live. And all I can say is my husband and I are praying that they don't do anything stupid there to get them to lose their last remaining hope. Hey, what's up with this disgusting lunch you packed me? You added way too much salt for me to enjoy. Are you trying to make your husband suffer with this salty meal? What's the matter with you? I'm sorry, Sean. I've had a stuffy nose since this morning, so I couldn't properly do a taste test. But still, I made your lunch despite my sore throat and fever, so please forgive me. I didn't ask for your sorry excuses. I can't believe that you'd given your husband a disgusting lunch like this without a second thought. I tried the best I could despite my body not being at its best. Sean, could I just take it easy for the rest of the day today? I'm sure if I just lay down for a while, my fever will go down. When I'm over here working hard, my wife wants to lie down and take a nap. What makes you think that I would ever allow something like that? But I'm not feeling all that good today. I can't clean or do the laundry, let alone get dinner ready. Would you mind eating out somewhere on your way home today? Enough with your excuses. It doesn't matter how sick you are, you should be able to do simple house chores. You're a housewife. The only reason you're able to live the life you currently live is thanks to me. Stop trying to slack off and get to work. I do have a fever, though. If I just get some rest today, I promise to do everything I couldn't do tomorrow. So please, just let me get some rest. How many times do I have to tell you to stop with the excuses? I won't allow you to relax while I'm out here working. You are here to keep doing your job, no matter how high your temperature is. That is an absolute order from your husband. If your fever goes down, then I'll know that you are resting. Millie? I can't sit back any longer and watch you mistreat my son. How much of a self-centered person can you be? You're able to live comfortably thanks to my son. You should be able to do something as simple as house chores. Catherine, it's been a while. May I ask why you're so angry? I'm angry because of you, Missy. You can't even understand something as simple as that. You're completely useless. Me? I don't want to be the type to be telling my son's wife off like this, which is why I've been so patient so far. But after you guys got married, you've been so full of yourself, I can't sit back and watch this any longer. What? Sean has been telling me about how you can't do simple chores properly. 
You can't even cook or clean properly. Apparently, you've been slacking off with the cooking as well. He's been saying that about me? You didn't even make him lunch today and gave him instant noodles instead? I can't believe you'd stoop so low. Hang on a minute, I haven't done any of that. I do all the chores properly. I even made his lunch today. Although, today was a bit of a failure. Uh, that was all due to me feeling pretty sick today. I always make his lunches properly. My son has been telling me the opposite. It seems like you're slacking off as well today. What? It seems like you don't understand where you stand in this life. As a wife, you're supposed to respect your husband. You're able to live comfortably because of Sean. If you can't understand that, then obviously you need some lessons from me. It seems like you won't listen to anything I say, but will listen to anything Sean will say. Fine then, if that's how it is, then I'll take your lessons or whatever else you want. How rude! What is the matter with you? This is not how you should be talking to your mother-in-law. I'll let you lecture me tomorrow. Right now, I have a 104 degree fever that I need to worry about. My head is gradually growing blank. Please just let me rest. I'll talk to you later, okay? Wait, 104? You were feeling that sick? Uh, if that was the case, then you should have said so earlier. Your son didn't tell you? The reason why I was slacking off all day today was due to my fever. What? Despite that, I did try to make his lunch for today, but I guess after complaining to me that it was too salty, he went and bought instant noodles. I wonder if he threw out the food I made him. You made him lunch, even though you were this sick? He didn't tell me anything about that. He just said that you didn't make him anything, so he had to go out and buy some noodles from the nearby store. It seems like he's been telling you a variety of things about me. I'm sorry, but I don't have the strength to defend myself against these allegations right now. I do need to rest now, so I'll talk to you later. We'll worry about that later. We should first do something about that fever of yours. What is going on here? This is completely different from what I've been hearing. Millie, if there's anything you need me to pick up for you, you just let me know, okay? Sean's at work, so you can rely on me. Sean, let me in. Why did you kick me out of the house so suddenly? Did I say something weird while I was asleep? Your coughing was way too annoying. It's midnight and yet you're loudly coughing away. Your husband can't sleep through all the noise you're making. I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about coughing. If you can't do anything about it, then you can just stay outside. There, problem was solved. You can cough all you want outside and you won't be a disturbance to anyone else. What? You're telling me that I have to spend the entire night outside, but, but I'm sick. I have a fever of 104, you know. If that's the case, then this is a perfect chance for you to cool down. It's cold enough outside, so you should be able to cool down your body properly. You're kidding. I have work tomorrow. I'm part of an important group, so I can't take the day off. I can't risk getting sick from you. For the sake of your husband's health, you need to stay outside all night. You'd kick your sick wife outside in the cold like this? You're not even the slightest bit worried? You're so cruel, Sean. What are you talking about? When I came home, you were done with all the chores, and you managed to make me dinner. You just made up the excuse of your fever just so that you could slack off. What did you say? Oh, brother, this sucks. Thanks to you, I'm still awake this late at night. I have to wake up early, so I'm gonna sleep now. Make sure to cool down throughout the night. Uh, Millie, where in the world are you? You're home, aren't you? Huh? Your husband decided to be nice and wake up early to let you back in the house, but you were nowhere to be seen. Because of you, I had to buy my breakfast from the corner store. You locked your wife out all night. Don't you have something that you would like to say about that? You're not gonna ask how I'm doing or apologize for what you did yesterday? Huh? Why would I apologize to you? If anything, you should be apologizing to me, interrupting my sleep with your loud coughing all night. Then you disappear without making me breakfast or lunch. What? You need to be more grateful to me. I mean, because I locked you out all night, your fever should have gone down by now, right? Are you feeling all better now? If that's the case, then you have no reason to be slacking off on your chores now. 
Your wife is no longer here. What? Millie is no longer your wife. I made her file for your guys' divorce. If you know what's good for you, then you'll leave her alone for the rest of your life. Forced her to file for divorce? What's that all about? If anything, who are you? A friend trying to play hero for a damsel in distress? Wrong. I'm her mother-in-law, otherwise known as your mother. Sean, what have you been doing to that poor girl? What? M Mom? I haven't been able to control my anger all night long. What heartless person would throw a person who is obviously very sick outside in the cold all night long? I have no recollection of raising you to behave this way. Wait, wait, why are you there with her? Why are you on her phone? I have been taking care of Millie since last night when you locked her out. She called me out of nowhere last night, asked for my help, and then lost connection. When I rushed over to the house, where she was unconscious outside, I thought I was going to have a heart attack looking at the scene in front of me. What? The door to the house was locked, and I saw the text messages sent between you and her. From there, I got the gist of what happened and immediately took her to the hospital. She was hospitalized all night and was discharged earlier this morning. From there, I encouraged her to file for divorce immediately. Why would you do that? I'm glad that you went through all the trouble to help out my wife, but, but still, why would you force a divorce into this situation? That's because it was what I thought would be best for her. I did nothing wrong in this. For Millie? Oh, is it for this wife training thing? You force a divorce so that she would understand how grateful she should be for me, right? <sighs> Thanks, Mom. You're the best. Just keep teaching her all the important things. She sucks at doing any of the chores. She's by far the worst wife ever. Huh? What are you talking about? Where is this horrible wife you're talking about? Because I know that Millie is definitely not one. She does everything perfectly and hasn't taken one single day off to take care of herself. If anything, it's amazing how she didn't get sick earlier. What? The reason why I told her to file for divorce is for her to be free from you. When I believed everything you said about her, I handed you the papers to file for divorce, right? I told you to sign it so that you can hand it over at any given time. I never imagined that it would have to be used like this. What are you talking about, Mom? It seems like you're mad at me rather than at Millie. I've gone way past anger now, and I've just settled in pure disbelief over this in entire situation. I can't believe that you were lying to me this whole time. This whole time you complained about how useless she was, but after hearing Millie out, it was completely the opposite. What? I was too worried about her health yesterday and decided to go check on her. And what I saw was her doing all the chores, even though she had such a high fever. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I did all the rest of the tasks for her. Really? I can't forgive you for what you've done as a woman and a wife. You completely abuse your position as a husband against your wife and lie to your mother. What is it that you were trying to achieve by doing all this? Calm down, Mom. You've got it all wrong here. I was doing all this for Millie's sake. Huh? I respect you a lot, Mom. You gave your all for your family. You were the example I wanted as a mother and the example of the perfect wife. So in order for her to be just like you, I was being all mean to her on purpose. I thought that her skills would improve more that way. That was completely pointless seeing as how perfectly she does everything. It was apparent when I visited her yesterday. She does her best every single day. Oh, you don't get it. She's pretty bad at cooking. Compared to you, her cooking is so bad. My favorite fried chicken especially tastes horrible when she makes it. I keep telling her to make it as good as you do, but she doesn't improve in the slightest. You had a favorite dish? Why didn't you say so earlier? I got those from a nearby restaurant that specializes in chicken. Wait, wait for the chicken place? Those were all from there? Yep, at first. I tried a bunch of ways to make my chicken taste good, but then one day when I wasn't feeling all too well, I decided to buy some from there and served it out for dinner. You finished those chickens way faster than any of the ones I've made. 
You even said that you love those, so I started to buy chicken from them every time. What? I just reheat and sometimes refry them just before dinner. If anything, your favorite curry dishes and hamburgers are also just takeout from the nearby stores. Really? No matter how much effort I put into cooking, if my child says that he prefers that over my own, then what else is there to do? I eventually gave up on being perfect at chores. I started to see them as a hassle more and more. Millie makes everything but the chicken really good. She never even had takeout for dinner since we got married. And yet you threw her outside and locked the door. Unbelievable. She's going to be spending a few days with me. In the meantime, you are not allowed anywhere near us. Millie, where are you? Please come back home to me. Never. Thanks to your mother, I finally was able to get a divorce. I don't want you ever to be in control of my life ever again. What do you mean by that? Sure, I was a bit harsh to you and all, but I still did my job as a husband and supported you. Huh? I promise to fix my attitude towards you, so please come back to me. You've gotten better and left my parents' house already, right? I don't know where you are now, but please come back. I can't live without you here with me. You complained about me being useless all the time to people, and now all of a sudden you can't live without me the moment I'm gone? Well, that's because I don't know how to cook or clean. I've been eating takeout this whole time, and now the house is a mess. All the laundry is all wrinkled, and I don't have a clean shirt to wear to work tomorrow. I have no intention of being your maid anymore. If that's what you want, then you can go hire one that'll do everything perfectly. Or, better yet, find a healthy wife who won't ever get sick. Look for a maid to hire, but they all cost so much money. I tried using dating apps and got women to come over, but the moment they saw the trash-filled house, they all left. There's no way I can get remarried like this. You don't want to spend money, but you want them to do the chores? You're such a horrible person. You were doing it for me. This time, I promise to be more helpful, so please. I'll even give you an allowance. So please, come back to me. My parents abandoned me, and now I don't have anyone I can rely on. Your parents abandoned you? I heard that you left my place, so I figured that it was finally my chance to go home, so I rushed over to them. But both my mom and dad sprayed me down with a hose and disowned me right there. Claiming that they don't want a son as embarrassing as I am. Oh my. Those two were that mad, huh? Maybe I spoke too much about our married life to them. Please, Millie, I I'm begging you. Let's get back together. I promise to cherish you this time. You're struggling from being a full-time housewife to having to provide on your own, right? Yeah, it's a bit hard, but I'm having fun, so it's fine. Thanks to your mother, I managed to fully recover and found a job immediately. The manager there is so nice and handsome. I can't help but want to be around him all the time. What? It's only been a month since we got a divorce. You're moving on to a different man already? Women can recover quickly, you know. So would you mind leaving me alone? To me, you're just a horrible ex-husband from the past. I don't care a single bit what a man like you is doing. But, but... Goodbye, Sean. Hopefully, you'll be able to make your favorite dishes on your own. <coughs> After that, I haven't gotten a single message from my ex-husband. If anything, I got all the money that I was due from our divorce the next day, so I'm guessing that his mother had something to do with all this. Every once in a while, she sends me a text checking up on me. If Sean hadn't been lying about me, then maybe we could have gotten along better than the relationship we have now. As for Sean, it seems like he has tried multiple times to get back in his parents' good graces, but they hose him down with water each time. He eventually started attending a class for house chores, but then told the teacher there that she should be doing his chores, which resulted in him getting banned from there. The encounter between them got spread all over social media, and now he is seen as a man who can't do simple tasks nationwide. Thank you for watching till the end. If you felt good about this video, like the video. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Subscribe too. Your likes and subs lead to our motivation. We have so many videos on our channel as well, so go ahead and take a look. See you in the next video!